Hello everyone and welcome back to the garden. I've been getting a lot of questions about saving zinnia seeds so I figured that's what we would do today. Now admittedly I didn't grow very many zinnias this year. Um, most of the zinnias that you're seeing are from last year's garden but uh, we'll get into that a little bit more in a second. I believe that zinnias are actually a member of the aster and sunflower family. And that means that when we look at the flower, they are going to make both something called a ray seed and a disc seed. Now, the ray seeds, um, I guess, simply come from the petals. And the disc seed, sometimes they're called the floret seeds also, are the ones, the seeds that come from this intersection um, that don't, you know, that don't have any petals attached to them. And that will vary depending upon you know, how double your flowers are. And um, some of them, when it comes to zinnias, now some of these aren't always fertile. A lot of hybrids aren't fertile. Maybe some hybrids might not be fertile, but for the most part, I find that zinnias will produce seeds um, unless some kind of weird cross-pollination has gone on with two different types with different numbers of, you know, chromosomes and things like that. So we're not gonna get into that. Either way, we should have a good selection of seeds. When we're taking a look at this zinnia flower, we should know the parts. These pollen florets are these little umbrella shaped looking things, these little yellow parts. And you'll see if you look into the flower itself, there's these little kind of strings, yellow kind of strings or threads probably is a better word, sticking up. Those are the stigmas. Um, each stigma of your zinnia plant can create its own seed when it's pollinated. Um, of course, uh, that's when the bees and the butterflies really come in handy. I did try to hand pollinate this year because I wanted to make some very specific crosses. But um, unfortunately, I don't think any of my, you know, pollination attempts actually took, even though I tried a lot, just because it's always so hot and humid here. Even when I went out like at 6 a.m., it was so hot and sticky that um, none of the pollen looks like it was viable. And um, you know how most pollen you can see, it's very powdery and fine. Mine was always sticky and goopy no matter when I tried. So who knows, maybe I was successful. Maybe zinnias are very receptive to the pollen. Either way, I did my best and we should have a lot of seeds um, to collect. So that should be exciting. While obviously pollination by bees and things is ideal, I have read that um, most of the zinnias will go ahead and produce seeds from the inner disc regardless of whether or not you know bees and things are visiting not sure how you know in terms of like self-pollination not sure how true that is again i'm learning right along with you i'm just trying to kind of give a complete overview this center disc these disc seeds uh, i've read at least are also much more likely to give you um, flower seeds fl that are very similar to the parent and if we're thinking that, you know, those are more likely to self-pollinate, that totally makes sense. So if we're looking to reproduce zinnias that are very much like the parent, maybe these disc seeds are something that you want to pay extra special attention to when collecting the seed. When we are saving the seed, you'll see that each of these um, zinnia seeds is shaped distinctly different. There are two types of seed um, in here. So like we said, the disc seeds, those seeds that are coming from the middle of the flower, those are more of a flat um, disc shape, ironically. They're very easy to identify once you have, you know, done this a little bit. And the ray petal seeds, the petal seeds, they're generally more pointy, um, very long and skinny and narrow, pointy. And they have like a little attachment point where you can see where the petal had been attached to the flower. The whole process of saving zinnia seeds is extremely simple. What I like to do personally is I just like to wait until the seed head is completely dry. Oftentimes, um, you know, once it's dried out, you can see where the seeds are already starting to fall out. That's especially convenient if you have a garden bed that you want to just kind of turn into a volunteer garden bed. Uh, because zinnias will definitely volunteer. What I like to do is I wait till the seed head is completely brown, no green, there's no pollen structures left. Often you can see that the birds have already been in there kind of starting to pluck them, which of course isn't desirable, but you know, here in my garden, it's something I'm totally fine with. When we're looking for viable seeds, 
Uh, when you give them a squeeze, they should be nice and plump between your fingers. You should be able to feel that there's actually, you know, a little seed embryo in there. Getting the seeds is insanely simple. I just rub them between my hands and let all the stuff fall out. Uh, later, I can kind of winnow that by dropping the debris particles from a higher space and letting the wind kind of blow away that extra chaff, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, some people, I've heard people have success with like separating the seed and the chaff by water, and I've never really done that with zinnias. I find that zinnia seeds, sometimes they can float even if they are viable, so I don't really do that. The best case scenario for me personally, what I like to do is I like to just leave the extra stuff, the extra dried bits in there and store it in just a huge envelope. Then when it comes time to plant and I've got my bed prepared, I can just spread that entire package of stuff into the garden. The seeds are in there, the good seeds are in there. And as long as everything is dry, it shouldn't cause any problems whatsoever in terms of germination. And it kind of helps um, the seeds spread out a little bit more in the garden instead of being uh, direct sown right on top of each other. So I think it's kind of beneficial. But again, everyone is different, so you have to find a technique that works best for you. Um, you can also save seeds that are green. And by green, I mean the flower is still very much alive. Of course, I mean, it will have started to decline a little bit by the time that the flower is actually producing seeds. But uh, this is best done by picking the ray or the like flower petal seeds. Um, basically, you just pluck it out and you'll see that it's green at the base and that they will be nice and full. However, if you do want to plant these at this time, um, what you want to do is you'll have to kind of make a little cut in that seed coat because since the seed coat is still green, it's still kind of waterproof and, you know, it's very difficult for moisture to get through there. So it's very difficult to germinate. That's kind of, you know, one of the things that helps keep the seed from germinating when, you know, winter is on the way or something like that before it can fully dry out. Uh, most people who do this are like zinnia breeders and stuff like that who want to get as many succession crops out of the season as possible. I know some people who hybridize zinnias can get, you know, multiple seasons out of the first, you know, the first planting of zinnias to see their results more quickly. I personally don't do it uh, just because, you know, I'm taking my dear sweet time here in the garden. Even though saving your zinnia seeds is insanely easy, there are some things to consider. When you are saving these seeds, you want to make sure only to save the seeds from plants that are totally healthy. Uh, many zinnia diseases such as alternaria leaf spot and bacterial leaf spot are, um, are spread, are seed borne. And basically what this means is if you have seed and those spores are present, it is very likely that it could contaminate your garden and your plants in that zinnia planting from that season. Um, I don't know for certain about powdery mildew because honestly I haven't found resources to tell me more information about specifically powdery mildew being seed borne, but I think it would only make sense since powdery mildew can overwinter in your garden on leaf debris. Um, that it would be able to overwinter on the seed coat as well. I'm not sure about that. I, I did try to research it, so if anybody has any information of that, that's one of the major reasons that it is so incredibly important um, when you ha have things like leaf spot and um, alternaria and things like that, and even powdery mildew, that if those infected plants are in the garden, go ahead and rip all those out and ditch them. Get rid of them. Don't put them in the compost or anything like that. Um, just a good way to kind of help keep your garden disease-free and maintenance-free as much as possible so that we can have really gorgeous, long-lasting zinnias. That's really about it for this video. I hope that it was helpful. Um, this is kind of a deep dive into saving zinnia seeds as much as I really know. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything, experiences, be sure to leave them down in the section down there below. I'd love to hear from you been trying to answer all the comments. I'm way behind for whatever reason. Got a lot of stuff going on here. Be sure to hit a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want. If you don't want to, that's fine too. There's no pressure here for me. I hope that y'all are having an amazing day. Talk to y'all later. Bye.